This is the brand new helmet from Bell. It's called the Zephyr and it represents their most cutting edge helmet to date. Now it is absolutely loaded with tech from the progressively layered construction, which we've never actually seen before in quite this arrangement, right through to the integrated MIP system, which is designed to reduce rotational impact energy. And also actually in this configuration, improve the very fit of the helmet. Now, I think you'll agree, or at least I hope you'll agree, even on me, that this is a very good looking helmet. And Bell have very kindly agreed to talk us through the process of how it actually came into existence from a blank sheet of paper right through to this, a high performance road helmet, including some wind tunnel testing and the Therminator. Oh yeah, more of that in a little bit. The story starts here with this man, Hill, who is actually the director of product Bollocks, I forgot it. <laughs> you can say I'm director sorry. of R&D. And Hill, who is the director of product creation. Hello. Hello. Hey, welcome. How you doing? Thank you very much. Cheers. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, when I heard that a man had come out of retirement to create this new helmet, I was expecting like an old dude with gray hair. To be fair, you look too young to have retired. <laughs> it's just California. We got a lot of good plastic surgery and, <laughs> you know, little implants up here. And So this is our finished product but we've obviously got a lot of stuff going on on this desk this tells a story does it of the product development well, do you literally start with a blank sheet of paper yeah we, we, we literally start with just an idea on paper um, it's a very collaborative exercise between the the business and engineering team design team you know safety is is number one that's, that's the front of everything that we do. That's, that's always the top of the list. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, both from a, a safety side, but also just from a, from a design side, from an aesthetic standpoint. You know, there's the, the expectation for product to look good. I mean, this is, this is really, in a lot of ways, it's a fashion piece, it's a wearable item. Um, and people are, you know, paying a lot more attention to what they're wearing. So you're, you're trying to blend this, this complex structure that's managing energy to the brain with art. You know, and that's something that we've done really well here over the years. These, this, this kind of snapshot that you're looking at, you know, it, it shows that, that art and how it evolves into something that's very technical. Well, with, with this helmet, there is some, you know, some pretty striking new tech going on. And so did that allow you then to design something that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to create? With yes. this, the dual, dual shell? Yeah, yeah, it, it, this kind of multi-layered construction um, allowed us to do a lot of things differently. It allowed us to not only give a much more unique visual impact to the product, but allow us to create what we call a structure uh, that manages energies at different levels, um, where we're, we're literally taking two separate components and, and joining them in a way that's much more meaningful um, in terms of how it manages energy. But then the upside of it is you get this really unique um, ability to create these really nice graphics and color yeah. opportunities um, that, that make it really stand out. Now, out in the main office, I've noticed there's a big mood board, right? Mm -hmm. And on that mood board, there's a load of cool sketches. Mm -hmm. But there's also some photos there that I wouldn't necessarily have expected that would be part of the inspiration for how much. There's a cowboy hat and there's a spaceman. So at what point do you take those kind of inspirations? You know, you've got like car models and stuff in here as well. You know. Do you build that into your idea of a new helmet? Um, for me, it's important to have something that I can latch onto that I can try and interpret. I can take a cowboy hat and create something that's artful and unique and would still satisfy a specific consumer. It doesn't always mean that it's a literal interpretation, but um, for me, it's really important to have that point of inspiration. So you guys are blessed with this pretty high-tech lab like in your facility here. There's a lot of equipment to test for safety, but then how cool is it that you've got your own mini wind tunnel going on? And not just a wind tunnel, but also a Therminator as well. Maybe you better explain what that actually is. So this is something that's extremely unique to us. Um, we call it the Therminator. It's something that actually measures ventilation, to put it simply. Um, it's essentially 
uh, aluminum head with thermal couples. They're strategically placed. Um, I won't go into too deep a detail on how it works, but essentially it allows us to measure thermal activity inside of the helmet. Um, and we collect a lot of data from this, but it's like it, it's completely unique and only one in existence that I know of. Now this, the Zephyr, isn't an out-and-out -out aero helmet, right? But I gather that you guys learned something pretty cool from your mini wind tunnel here about the straps. Is that right? Yeah. The wattage savings for straps? Yeah, I don't know the specific numbers in terms of watts, but um, you know, it's, it's no secret that if you can keep the webbing flat to your face, it reduces drag. Um, and, it's, and it's also, you know, one of the big components of, of the Zephyr is really the comfort aspect too. Um, you know, getting that twist out, it's just a more comfortable feeling. So you get a, you get a double benefit with, you know, it's, it's more aerodynamic, um, actually three benefits if you think about it. There's no wind noise and then um, it's, it's more comfortable and aerodynamic. So you get those three things. It's, it's a, it's an amazing benefit for something that's simple. And, and you know, I mentioned that the simple solutions are often the hardest ones to come by. And, uh, and that's something else that, um, you know, we, we apply to this. We, we tried to do everything on the product right, not just a couple of things. It's a baby. Yeah. Look at the little helmet. So this is our this is our workshop. Uh, this is some place I grew up in here. I love this part of the the facility. It's amazing. Um, we can pretty much make anything here. This is really where art and technology come together, and the shop allows us to do that. You know, we you can see we've got technology merging with hand sculpting stations. So. You know, this is really where it all comes together, where we take our ideas and, and, and build them. So in front of us, is this, the, this is a mold? Yeah, so this is, this is an example of what we call an EPS tool or a, a tool that creates the foam. Um, it's, this is an older tool. This is here as an example, but a lot hasn't changed. Um, these tools are very complicated and people don't really understand the level of complexity that, it, that goes into a helmet. Um, this is this particular mold has a lot of different parts to it and every one of these parts we have to figure out how not only does the product look but how we can actually build a tool to create the look that we want so the more complex the helmet the more complex the tool yes and presumably therefore the greater the cost right yes exactly it's it's the type of product that we have with helmets is it doesn't allow for a lot of automation and so you can see that there's these puzzle pieces that that have to be put into the tool and these puzzle pieces are essentially hand assembled in the tool for each cycle that the, the helmet is for run. each helmet? Yeah. So. I genuinely did not know there was that amount of labor that went into a helmet. In my ignorance I just thought there was a mold, you know, goes in, goes out and all the, all the hard work is done you know, here, pre-production, getting it ready, but actually, clearly not. I don't know about you, but I'd never really given all that much thought to helmet design before. But after a day at Bell, I will certainly be looking at helmets a little bit differently from now on. And as for this one, the Zephyr, well, clearly it is loaded with some cool new tech. It's the dual shell, progressively layered construction, which you can clearly see when you have a look at the helmet, to the MIPS, which is built into the fit system. And then, how about this for a really cool, novel approach to sweat management? The pad effectively draws water away from your forehead onto this, the lowest point in the helmet, from which the water will drip instead of dripping down your face, into your eyes, or into your glasses. So neatly tackling an age-old problem. A problem that's probably worse for some of us than others. Anyway, all in, this helmet weighs 280 grams in a size medium. Now, certain things that you might not have thought about helmets is how to wear one, like a pro, no less. So why not let Matt and I take you through the process, tongues firmly in cheeks, in that video just up there. Or to see more tech here on GCN, why not click just down there for our playlist. And do make sure you subscribe to the channel before leaving this video. To do it is absolutely free. You just gotta click on the red globe somewhere on this screen.